It's me again, the Weather Observer. And me, Sunny! We'll introduce weather thermometers in this episode. Huh? Why is there a shed here? Are we having an outdoor party? Slow down, Sonny. This is a shed for placing thermometers at the observatory headquarters. A shed for thermometers? Why do thermometers have their own shed? Because we have to ensure the accuracy of the thermometers. Thermometers are mainly used to measure the outdoor air temperature at about 1.25 to 2 meters above the ground. However, radiant heat from the sun, clouds, ground, and surrounding objects may affect temperature measurement. Also, the influence of wind and rain needs to be avoided, but good ventilation around the thermometers must be maintained in order to measure the air temperature accurately. So we built a shed for the thermometers. The official name for this shed is Thermometer Shed. The shed is covered by mattresses and palm leaves. Generally, it'll be resurfaced or have a major repair every five years. Minor repairs will also be made as needed during this period. Do all weather stations in Hong Kong have a thermometer shed? No, because of its bulky size. It's only set up at the observatory headquarters. Stevenson screens are used at the automatic weather stations over Hong Kong for housing thermometers. Can we do measurements by simply placing the Stevenson screens anywhere outdoors? Of course not. There are special requirements for the placement of a Stevenson screen. When placing a Stevenson screen, make sure the door is facing north. We all know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Both sides in the east and west are easier to be shined on by the sun. Also, Hong Kong is in the northern hemisphere. By orienting the door of the Stevenson screen to the north, when the weather observers open the Stevenson screen to check the instruments, the chance of direct exposure of thermometers to the sun can be greatly reduced. So the doors of the Stevenson screens in the northern hemisphere will be placed facing north, while those in the southern hemisphere should be facing south. The surface of the Stevenson screen is also deliberately painted white, and the ground is planted with short grass to reduce the influence of radiant heat on the measurements. Wow! There are a lot of thermometers in the shed! How many types of thermometers are there? A total of five types of thermometers are installed in the shed, including a dry bulb thermometer, a wet bulb thermometer, a maximum thermometer, a minimum thermometer, and a platinum resistance thermometer. These two erected thermometers are a dry bulb thermometer and a wet bulb thermometer. Both use the properties of thermal expansion and contraction of the mercury at the bottom bulb of the thermometer to measure the temperature. Why is there a dry type and a wet type? What's the difference? The dry bulb thermometer measures the air temperature directly. The wet bulb thermometer measures the temperature that air can reach when water evaporates. The mercury bulb of a wet bulb thermometer is wrapped in a wet cloth. As the water vapor in the air isn't saturated, the water around the wet bulb will evaporate. When water evaporates into the air, it takes away heat energy and causes the wet bulb temperature to drop. So the temperature will change according to the degree of water evaporation on the wet cloth. The drier the weather, the faster the water will evaporate and the lower the wet bulb temperature reading. On the other hand, when the weather is humid, it'll be harder for water to evaporate and the wet bulb temperature will be higher. Based on the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures, the relative humidity and dew point temperature can be calculated. What are those thermometers placed horizontally? They are the maximum thermometer and the minimum thermometer. The one at the bottom is an alcohol thermometer, which is the most common minimum thermometer. There is a lightweight dumbbell-shaped index inside the thermometer. When the temperature increases, the alcohol flows through the index. When the temperature decreases, the alcohol contracts and the surface tension on the top of the alcohol column will drag the index towards the alcohol bulb. The minimum temperature is then obtained. The one on the top is a mercury thermometer, which is the most common maximum thermometer. There's a constricted passage between the mercury bulb and the glass stem tube. When the temperature increases, the mercury expands and the mercury column rises. When the temperature decreases, the mercury contracts. Due to the high surface tension of mercury, the mercury column will break at the narrow passage during contraction. 
The remaining mercury column that stays above indicates the highest temperature. Why aren't they placed completely horizontal? Generally, the placement of the maximum and minimum thermometers are tilted by around 2 degrees. This can prevent the mercury inside the bulb at the end of the maximum thermometer from overflowing the narrow passage. The alcohol in the minimum thermometer can move the index easier, too. Every weather station has thermometers! Do weather observers travel all over Hong Kong every day to collect data? No. Those thermometers I introduced are traditional thermometers for backup purposes. Considering mercury is a toxic liquid, since 2020, the World Meteorological Organization has recommended replacing mercury thermometers with other thermometers. The Hong Kong Observatory has been using platinum resistance thermometers since 1984 to automatically transmit the temperature, maximum and minimum temperatures from all weather stations back to the observatory in real time. Platinum thermometer? Platinum is really expensive! It's a platinum resistance thermometer. It's a temperature sensor made of a metal whose resistance is affected by temperature changes. The resistor is made of platinum wire. The thermometer isn't completely made of platinum. Besides measuring air temperature, the observatory also provides soil temperature, grass temperature, heat index, etc. So how do weather observers measure soil, grass temperature? Wait, Sonny, we can introduce those in the next episode. <laughs> okay! Measuring temperature is an interesting topic. Let's tell you more next time. Goodbye! Goodbye!